Hey everyone, and welcome back to my completionist playthrough of the Baldur's Gate Saga with SCS. And as you can see, once again, we're starting off by selling all of our recently acquired gems and jewelry for a total of almost 3,000 gold. And I've also prepared some other items that I wanted to get rid of, like these scrolls and this potion of stone form. And on the ground, we have a couple of more, and uh, these include some of the loot that we got in the vampire hideout and some excess wands. So we can safely sell those, and this Wand of Lightning, that's our fourth one, so we, we don't need that many. And I think one of these uh, Wands of Fire yeah, is stolen. So we're going to recharge the other one, and Sinashira is going to hold on to this one, and also to this mace that is also stolen, and we're going to visit a fence a little bit later. Now on the topic of Wands, you might be wondering why I'm you know, keeping uh, so many of them, cluttering Edwin's inventory, and that's for a couple of reasons. Um, one, we're going to get Imoen pretty soon, and she's going to be another mage that's uh, going to be able to make use of them. And uh, also, I like to have, you know, extra copies of the same ones, uh, because that will allow us, if the situation calls for it, to unleash the same spell two or three times in the same round. It's pretty unlikely that we're going to decide to do such a thing, but it's nice to have the option. And also, it's nice to have uh, different types of wands already in uh, the inventories of every mage in my party without having to like pass them over. Uh, you know, if if I want to use a certain spell with a certain mage, uh, it's nice to have you know multiple wands of the same spell uh, available for that purpose. And also, uh, another thing I wanted to talk about, I prepared some things. Um, in between episodes, and like I've sorted my scrolls a little bit, I've sorted the, the potions a little bit better. And like for example, I found three more potions of invulnerability in Senashira's potion bag. Um, also, I've moved these potions of perception where they belong in in Kir Kirinai's uh, potion case. Uh, also, I sorted ammo between our two ammo belts. Uh, one of them uh, consists of uh, bolts and bullets now, and I've also, while doing that, identified to the bolts plus two, because now Edwin's lore allows us to do that. And the other ammo belt has arrows and darts. And um, also, on camera, I kind of wanted to do a couple of different things. Uh, I think we're going to give this to Kirinai and get these explosive potions into the potion case, and that frees up another slot in Edwin's inventory. And also I'm going to do a little switcheroo when it comes to strength items on uh, Jahira and Anuman. Um, Anuman is going to get this uh, belt of strength uh, because that's going to improve his damage by 4 and his thaco by 1. And uh, Jahira can get these uh, gloves of ogre power now. And these plus 1 thaco gauntlets are going to go to our um, bag of holding. Now that we don't have another physical fighter that needs that kind of thing more, um, you know, we can we can be a little bit more effective, I guess, with our uh, with our gear that way. And uh, Jahira is going to have some like mighty resistances now with this uh, belt. She's going to be just from gear resistant to a lot of things. Uh, also having this uh, Harper's pin now her savers spell is two, and uh, her resistances she has uh, quite a few already from coming from gear. Uh, electricity damage actually will heal her because uh, her resistance is above 100 and 127 is the max and um, basically once we have MON we're going to de-equip her boots of uh, uh, of grounding because she doesn't need uh, you know that much uh, electricity resistance but uh, anyway so that's that we also wanted to Oh yeah, recharge these ones, and we're going to recharge ones using Bernard's shop because uh, he really has some discounts prepared for us, and he has better prices. And uh, I actually can demonstrate that. Let's just equip our charisma cloak first, so that we can buy them yes. for a better price. So uh, don't go anywhere, Bernard. And so we can uh, sell one of these ones of the heavens to him, and as you can see we can buy it back for almost 7,000, and if we sell the other wand to someone else, like Jolov here, You'll find no better prices in armor. I guarantee it. a fully recharged wand uh, in his inventory costs, or would cost us, almost 10,000 gold. Uh, I am going to buy his Defender of East Haven already though, because that might come in handy. Um, I'm going to wait with Scarlet Ninja though, because it's going to be a long while before Kirinai has used any item. We don't need it uh, yet. But uh, we're going to have this uh, option of Anuman actually 
using uh, the Defender of Eastraven. Oh yeah, and of course we want to buy our wands back, now recharged, and you know, for all, everything that we have stolen from Bernard, we can now afford to, you know, allow him to, to make some profit <laughs> here. And uh, now we have another nice wand of fire with a lot of charges, not just again as our Scorcher charges, but uh, all of them. And uh, Anuman now also has a nice wand of the heavens uh, that he doesn't need to uh, worry about when it comes to its charges. Alright, and that's going to be it for now. Now we can actually rest and progress time a little bit. So now it should be night time. Yeah, it's 10 p.m. Also, we can cast two more of these limited wishes, although I only really need one, but <laughs> I'm going to cast them uh, in here, like in the copper coronet in front of all of these people. And <laughs> we can be like, you know, nothing to see here, folks. Just a magical genie that can make your wishes come true. <laughs> Move along. <laughs> Uh, anyway, from these one-time wishes, uh, we still want uh, the additional copy of uh, Gloves of Identification. So we have another one of those. can stash that. And uh, the other wish spell, I'm just going to maybe uh, entertain or, or freak some of the people here by summoning the Horde. Uh, because when it comes to the one-time wishes, like I've said, the... Um, the monsters to become more experienced. We're going to wait for Imoen for that, and also the adventure. I could already start it, but um, uh, we will do it as you know a separate kind of episode sometime in the future, where we're going to do it from start to finish without any like breaks um, in between uh, certain parts of it. So let's have a repeatable wish and summon a horde. So he summons a horde of rabbits, pretty bunnies. And just start hopping around. Uh, so, anyway, now we have that uh, done. The next order of business now that we have night time is uh, I wanted to showcase a certain conversation that always happens in the government district, but we were always unlucky, I guess, when it came to visiting the government district. Uh, and this is a, a conversation that uh, normally, uh, you know, usually in a playthrough happens very early, and it definitely fits. Uh, way more when you're beginning your playthrough because these guards here um, are going to warn us not to be uh, out and about I guess during during the night and uh, they're going to actually be a little suspicious of us uh, being some troublemakers and uh, <laughs> this is actually a good response here like have you seen anything suspicious or unnatural lately other than your two friends here nope <laughs> so uh, anyway we don't really know what he means here. And basically they're going to talk about the, the guild wars uh, taking place at night between the Shadow Thief and the other rival guild that is now <laughs> already destroyed, basically. But uh, yeah, like I said, this uh, this conversation doesn't really fit all that well uh, anymore yes. for us, but it's something that I still wanted to show off. And also, since we have Jan and it's night time, we can do a, a conversation with Bertrand here. Yes, yes. A fellow gnome, if he decides to give us the, the correct one, yeah. Jan Janssen. Apparently, they they know each other. <laughs> this is pretty funny. The lasses love you only for your nose, Bertrand. <laughs> so I guess uh, you know, he he knows how to use that nose. Anyway, <laughs> now we can uh, get rid of Jan. And we're not going to customize everything, anything. We're going to customize our party here well, and remove Jan. Are we to separate on this note? Yeah, you can go back to selling turnips and uh, yeah. chill at home. All right, now it's time to travel to Trade Meet. So actually, we are going to be back one more time in Trade Meet. Also, uh, what is it? these oh, goblins. Wanted to bite more than they can chew here, or wh however the <laughs> expression goes. Um, most of them managed to get away. Kind of the same concept as these bandits in Nathgadla, that uh, you know actually notice that you are way too powerful for them, and they just run. Uh, anyway, here we are going to visit Mazzy just to see how she's doing. Say hello. What is it? Speak. I am listening. Yes, it will be done. You have returned, I see. What is it that you need? So we just want to have a little chat. Mazzy says that 
she actually has considered uh, raising up a party on her own. So that's cool, that's cool. And she also going to gift us this Sword of Arverine for all that we have done for her. You know, rescuing her from the Shade Lord's dungeon and allowing her um, to travel with us for a while, also saving her sister Pala. So this has been a really nice chat, like I've said. <laughs> and that Sword of Arverine can be useful with use any, any item because it provides an immunity to stun, which is a rarity. And uh, yeah, it's it's been nice chatting, Mazzy. Glad to see that you're Are doing you well. Sure that you wish me to leave? There is still much good that we need to accomplish in this place. Yeah, you have a lot to to accomplish. What is it? Return to your home. There she is again. <laughs> anyway, I also wanted to visit Trade Meet because uh, this blacksmith, as weird as it is, has still uh, a couple of cool scrolls that we can get. And actually, it's time to bust out our nymph cloak once again. Speak without doubt. Well, you look like the sort who has more than two. All right. So, what do you have for the heroes of trade meet? Some fire shields red. We have plenty, but there is never enough breach spells. One lower resistance is also going to be cool. We can get this oracle, and uh, we just need to stash them in the proper scroll cases. This can actually go here, because we we're probably going to teach uh, Imo in that spell. And uh, what else do you have for me? Well, of course, we need these protection from magical energy. Pierce magic. He also has an ammo belt that uh, I haven't bought. And also that Fletcher uh, merchant at uh, Joaquin's Promenade has another ammo belt. So there's quite a few of them. You can store all the ammo that uh, ever existed in this game, <laughs> I guess. I guess we can get, like, one mislead for uh, future shenanigans with, uh, with Karen I. All right, and I think that's going to be it. So uh, what's next on our list here? All right, now we're going to pass some more time because if my calculations are correct, about day 37, so about three days from now, we should be visited by a messenger from Diarnese Keep. And that's actually the only way you can get the, that quest. Uh, you can go to Diarnese Keep and like sleep there, but it's never going to happen unless you actually go out. And uh, this this is how you're supposed to get this quest, by a messenger where you're not at Diarnese Keep. Uh, so we're going to progress time semi-productively, because we're going to craft another an, another item here with Cromwell. We're going to upgrade our Mace of Disruption so that it becomes an even greater item. And also, since this is going to make us rest, we are going to actually have a plan for, for a nice wish somewhere in the future, but I think for now, uh, let's get Ruby Ray. Always nice to, to have that at our disposal. Uh, we have a spell sequencer set up, although it's not perfect, and uh, I could actually set up a better one, but it doesn't matter. We're going to use that spell sequencer soon, so I guess maybe for a, for another one we can already memorize spell sequencer. All right, Cromwell, what do we have here? So he's going to basically mention always if we have any components that that he could use. So here he mentions that we uh, need the belt for a Crom Fair. Yeah, he's going to mention the equalizer. So of course, as always, feel free to uh, pause and read in detail. You know, we have some parts of the uh, short bow of Gessen. Yeah, the wave blade. There he mentioned that we have the shaft, but not the blade. All right. So here we have the Elithium that we have not given to uh, Sir Sarles earlier, and we have the Mace of Disruption that can be upgraded uh, using that material. Seven and a half thousand gold. Let's do it. And uh, in this episode, I think we should be right on time, but even if it takes more, uh, we're going to keep going as long as it takes, <laughs> basically, to uh, do everything I want to do before our departure. And before moving on to the next chapter, I want to be done with everything in this episode so that the next one can be, you know, in the next part of the uh, main storyline already. I don't want to have any more episodes that are not going to be that. Alright, so now we have the upgraded Mace of Disruption, 
and uh, this one is just truly excellent because finally we have another item that grants us an immunity to level drain. So this is going to be a major upgrade from just having the Amulet of Power. We also now have the Mace of Disruption. Uh, of course it retains the ability to immediately destroy undead. Uh, it still de deals massive damage but also strikes as a plus 5 weapon, which is also very uh, notable for a couple of encounters. And this is going to be uh, you know, a great undead slaying weapon for uh, Animan. But we're going to keep it in our bag of holding for now. Yes. And uh, also, I think I'm going to spawn a certain character because uh, I think he would only appear at like day 43 and I'm not going to wait all that long. Um, and one thing I wanted to mention is that although I really really like Edwin in his f female form and I have done it many times where we're actually, you know, I progressed to the next chapters with him as a female and he had to stay in that form for a long long time that way because he cannot get transformed back until we're back in Afkatla again and uh, we are about to embark on a on a long long journey, an epic long journey uh, through many mysterious and interesting places. But I think uh, since we're going to get Imoen, and uh, Senashira is also a female mage, just to have a little bit more variety, especially when everyone is buffed up with like stone skins and stuff, let's have actually one uh, male mage, uh, so that uh, you know they look a little bit differently and uh, we have a little bit more variety. So I'm going to progress uh, Edwin's main uh, quest with the Nether Scroll here, so that he can get turned back to his uh, normal form uh, before we actually progress to the next chapter. So to that effect I am going to spawn the Garden who would normally show up, like I said, at the day uh, 43 what is it? I think. And can he not spawn here? He can actually spawn indoors and uh, this should work can spawn indoors and uh, on rest or on travel and we're going to actually go to the Dearness hold anyway. Alright, there he goes. Hold up wayfarers. I have a few queries for this lowly group of middling pilgrims. Well, don't call me that, but anyway. Uh, so he's going to say that he's looking for Edwin and apparently magical divination has pointed this area as to his uh, whereabouts. So we can ask why they are looking for Edwin. Edwin is a self-serving nerveless worm. He's gone rogue. He tithes nothing and has vilified the masters of the order and sullied their good names. Because uh, he is a red wizard of Thay and they have a special kind of hierarchy full of scheming mages that turn on one another but apparently there are some rules in the organization. As it happens his prowess as a spellcaster consists of parlor tricks and balls under coconut shells. Did I mention the fantastic reward as well? Well, that's just purely not true <laughs> when it comes to Edwin's skills. Like, you can say anything you want about Edwin, but he is a fantastic spellcaster. So, of course, we're going to cover for Edwin. Apparently there's a King's Ransom. He pays you 5,000 gold if you, uh, uh, if you uncover Edwin, I guess, uh, for him, if you betray Edwin. I'll be sure to let you know, dude. Alright, so from this encounter, he's going to show up in two days, and I'm going to let that uh, play out normally without any spawning of him, uh, just so that uh, his other conversations can uh, play out correctly. So I'm going to play it safe, and uh, yeah, we're just going to be resting outdoors. Alright, so here comes the keep messenger. We are, of course, very far away from the keep, <laughs> very far from our lands. Anyway, apparently Lord Rowanel himself is waiting to see us at our keep. Alright, so let's just... Uh, go inside and see what's up. Let's make this short walk to our keep. <laughs> yeah, he has been agitated by the wait and does not seem pleased. Yeah, it, it took us a long while to, <laughs> to, get, uh, to get back to the keep. Yeah, so of course he only wants to see us. Alright, so let's send him in and his entourage. No Alright, let's make this quick, peasant. Nalia de Ernis was betrothed to a Rowanol by her father. Whether or not that wedding is going to happen, this land is ours by right. Nalia is too young to decide for herself to just give the land away, and the very idea is preposterous at the least. 
So, I am going to be a gentleman and give you the choice to decide your fate for yourself. Give up this castle. You will never rule it in the long run, in the long run, at any rate. You have no noble blood. Give it up now, and all will be forgiven. What do you say, peasant? <laughs> so here Lord Rowanol shows his true face. He's not a nice, calm, like, jolly merchant. Uh, but, well, I'm, I'm not going to call him what I want to call him. <laughs> but anyway, of course, we're going to say, forget it. Now, get off of my land. Get off my lawn. I see you are stubborn and stupid as any other peasant. Very well. The next time I return, it shall be with my army at my back. Alright, but it's going to take a long while until he's back. There's going to be three more quests before uh, he returns. Yeah, so ma our uh, Major Domo is going to be freaked out a little bit, and Captain Cernic uh, is going to, you know, do all in his power to build up our forces, and he's going to send scouts to the borders of our lands, so that uh, we are going to be approached by a messenger, hopefully in time, of course, whenever anything happens, whenever we can spot any movement of uh, Lord Romanol's forces. Alright, so actually, let's go outside, let's give ourselves some room to meet uh, the garden again, and we're going to have to rest quite a few times, but I want to do it, well, just like like I explained, I want to do it uh, kind of the safe way, so we can rest a couple of times, give ourselves a couple of days off, and here comes the garden again. Greetings again, friends of Edwin. The guise as a woman reeks of shabby amateur glamours. The fix is in, Edwin. Your time here is done. <laughs> and his responses are going to be just gold. What? I have no idea of what you're talking about. What is this fool babbling to me for? <laughs> in your own inimitable fashion, Edwin, you are a prodigious at lying, or prodigious. Certainly not at magic or spinning wholly credible yarns. Or... Uh, I am no Edwin, as you claim. I know him not. He sounds like a worthy mage of distinction, and I am probably weaker, having not made his acquaintance. <laughs> My name is Selisa of Waterdeep. Yes, daughter of Cur... Curdle Aleconner, a wealthy mead-maker and owner of a chain of fest halls. No Edwin in our midst, I'm most sorry to say. Only Selisa Aleconner. <laughs> You'd best be off to capture this Edwin. He sounds like a formidable foe. <laughs> Gods, this fictional world you live in must be a glorious place, Edwin. <laughs> but anyway, he has a special uh, spell prepared. Actually, let's let's not move here. Let's not do anything that could. Cured, cured of my wretched condition. The garden, I owe you my health, wealth, and well-being. I am reborn. So this is, I think, the only line in the game where Edwin seems truly happy. Like, you can see the smile on his face, basically, when, when he is uh, uttering this, these lines. My metamorphosis was troubling, but now I am restored. Now it is time for proper payment of the witness, or witnesses to my shame. Now it's time for you to die. <laughs> Yeah, apparently they they have encountered each other in the past, I guess. But yeah, actually now let's let's stay before he like properly goes hostile. All right, there it is. Everything should be fine now. Now we can spread out and see what we can do here in this fight. All right, so he has a list of pre-buffs, but it's not that bad. He has spell turning, fire shield, stone skin, protection from cold. Uh, but he doesn't have any spell turning, and he doesn't have improved invisibility. So I think we should be able to dispel him immediately. Although, of course, we are not protected against his interruptions. So if we get a little unlucky, we could get interrupted by his minute meteors that he surely also has. But let's use a little... Well, I kind of wanted this uh, spell sequencer that we have prepared with the double uh, remove magic... On, I wanted to use it on him, and I think I am going to unleash it first. Alright, that was effective. So now we should be able to just finish him off. No problem. <laughs> what is it now? Ha! And he thought himself a capable spellcaster. Perhaps those fools will think twice now before they send another of their goons to bellow hollow threats. So yeah, what's up with you and the red wizards then, Edwin? 
Let's just say that not every colleague is pleased with my disposition, and I have been on an extended leave from my compatriots in Thay. Not that it's any of your business. Being saddled with the company of monkeys should be enough self-punishment for anyone. But enough. Let us away. So yeah, there's apparently some trouble between Edwin and the Red Wizards, and there's also another conversation uh, that he has... Um, there's one in the Enhanced Edition that he has with Rasad, but there's also another one, I think, uh, that reveals that uh, he actually has, you know, hair on his head, whereas uh, traditionally the Red Wizards of Thay are uh, supposed to shave their heads and be bald. Uh, but, uh, you know, he is kind of trying to, I guess, you know, s separate himself, distance himself, at least, you know, when it comes to appearances uh, from the rest of the Red Wizards. So when it comes to their hierarchy, I guess, he doesn't, well, tithe anything and probably made some enemies back in Thay. Which is actually not surprising, because th that's ge the general thing about the Red Wizards of Thay. There's plenty of scheming in their ranks uh, and basically fighting for power. Anyway, and the Garden has another Wand of Monster Summoning with only five charges and some loot that we can sell. Alright, and now we are mostly done with everything that I wanted. Let's just, kind of, before we rest or and do anything, before I forget, let's just get the spell sequencer set up again. And let's just put three remove magics here. Just have a kind of a cookie cutter, just a universally useful selection there. Um, now we have to go back to the slums. If it must be done. Because we basically have taken care of of uh, everything that I wanted, really. The only thing left is uh, taking back Yoshimo into our party, because he is going to be extremely relevant in what's about to happen. And all of the rabbits here, they only last for a certain okay. amount of time, and we're unsummoned now. It is good to see you again. Have you need of my services? Because I am ready to travel if you do. This place is dulling to the senses. Alright, yep. And Yoshimo is going to be completely in the loop <laughs> when it comes to, uh, like, up to speed when it comes to everything that has happened. Uh, Tell me, how did you get into adventuring? It is a dangerous business, as you well know. Any one of us could die without even a moment's notice. Yeah, so that's one of his conversations that happens uh, at the very beginning of the, the game. Yeah, so, of course, uh, he's going to ask a little bit of, uh, of us and... Uh, you know, not knowing him too well, it would be more cautious, I guess, not to divulge too many uh, pieces of information about ourselves. But here, we know that nothing is going to <laughs> uh, come out of it. Yoshimo, let's just say that he is not going to have uh, an option to <laughs> to like use this information in, in any way. Yeah, but he's very straightforward here, like, tell me more about this man who killed your stepfather. Yeah, so he, we can tell him about Saravok, and he also wants to know about our father. And I guess this really makes sense for our character to be like, all right, like, well, why is this guy so, so suddenly inquisitive and very straightforward about his questions? So we can try to to avoid that. Anyway, let's cut the conversation short there. But you you can tell him about you know you being a child of Ball, and he is going to believe you. And like I said, nothing comes out of it, but just for, like, role-playing purposes, we're not going to, uh, like, tell our life story to this complete stranger, <laughs> uh, like, right away. Anyway, now is the time to finally visit the Shadow Thieves again, and um, when it comes to actually, you know, progressing the storyline to the next chapter, I'm going to save that for uh, the next episode, but still we can... We have one more thing to do here, and I'm just going to switch to my Charisma Cloak. And uh, to this fence over here, we can sell the Wand of Fire, the Mace, finally, and this uh, recently obtained Quarterstaff. And she also might have some scrolls that I might want to purchase here. Well, actually, it might take one Ice Storm. I'm not sure if Imoen has that in her spellbook. So just for learning purposes and, and uh, a few thousands of experience, we might get that. And that's going to be it. What is it? And it seems like we're right on time. 
when it comes to reporting to Aaron Lindvale. In the next episode, we're going to, of course, um, relay to him what happened in uh, Bodhi's lair, and that we were, of course, successful. We have destroyed the rival guild, and we are actually going to get some answers, because, as you remember, Bodhi had some a few things to say about the Shadow Thieves and their motives. So, anyway, this is pretty pretty much perfect when it comes to the time of this episode, so I thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.